Next thing we're going to go into is uh, recognition of prior learning. And so we have eliminated the crossover course from the standards. They're no longer in there. So now all instructors are going to become instructors through a minimum set of standards called the ITC. All right. So that's, going to, that's the new ruling or that's the direction that we move in from, from the release of the standards forward or for now that you've been to the workshop and will have a better understanding of this this day forward for yourself. This is the definition of uh, RPL, a process of identifying, assessing, and recognizing what course applicants already know what and can do without their having to go through a formal learning process in the areas. Basically giving them credit. You know, if they've been teaching for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, done 2,000 certifications on their belt, we can give some credit there where credit is due. It's applicable and legitimate for all NAWI leadership and instructor level courses, so dive master, assistant instructor, skin diving instructor, and instructor is where this is going to be used. A formal process that results in a portfolio of evidence compiled by the candidate, reviewed and accepted by the instructor, which becomes part of the candidate's training record. Okay, so there's going to be a, a two-part system here, them and you getting together, deciding on what they can do, what they can't do, and what needs to be done to make them uh, a NAWI instructor. The evaluator can be an instructor, an instructor trainer, course director, who is tasked with considering evidence for RPL. In other words, you don't have to. It's totally up to you. It's not a mandate from the association. It's totally up to you if you choose to do or use uh, RPL. The RPL evaluator at this stage acts as a coordinator, facilitator, and advisor. A little coaching going on here because you're going to have to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one session with them. Once the compiled evaluator becomes accessor and determines how much recognition is awarded, then we prepare an individualized training plan to meet the remaining requirements for graduation. So that's kind of what we've done in the past with a crossover. We're saying we're giving you credit, but you mentally got to do one, one, and one to see that you've got it before we go forward. The, the principles of RPL, candidates have the right to be evaluated for prior learning and to be reevaluated within the limits and the burden of proof falls upon them. This is not, you know, let me in and let me in, I'm good. This is, do they have to prove that they can actually do this stuff? The practice of RPL, candidates request credit for existing knowledge and skills. Now. To be honest with you, I don't think a candidate's going to come up to you and say, hey, can I get out of the course by proving I can do this? I don't believe that's going to happen. I think the professional thing to do is, if we know the person that's our candidate coming into the course, whatever, which one it is, and we know they got a teaching background, or they've been teaching for a long time, or they've got a um, swimming background, or whatever that background may be, maybe at that point we sit down with them and have the conversation and find out how good they are what we can use towards certification or graduation and what needs to be really done. So again, giving them uh, respect for their professional knowledge of the past. It is contingent on identifying their knowledge and skills, so you do have to still do something. It has to compare to the NAWI standards and ensures that recognition is given only where sufficient evidence is provided. So there's going to be an evidence collection session going on here. It's not just word of mouth saying, oh, I know you, Jim, you can do this, you're in. It's not that at all. Any gaps identified where more evidence or new learning will be required is another part. It focuses on competency versus learning. Are they competent? If they are competent and can do it, then the learning process can be shortened. Appraisal leading to the RPL can take various forms. It can be an on-the-job assessment. If I go into an other agency store in a crossover scenario and I've actually seen this instructor teach classroom, see him in the pool, then it could be said that they've got their act together. All I need to do is adjust to the NAWI way of evaluating and move forward. If I've been on a boat with, as, a, as a competitor to this instructor candidate, and I've actually watched them on the boat do dives, do briefings and debriefings with open water students of their agency and been there and seen all that, then I can give credit there. Because I've actually witnessed and seen it. The next part, we just need to document. So on the job assessment works. Questioning, okay, it has to be recorded and it has to be included as a portfolio of evidence. And that portfolio of evidence is going to be in the blue folder file is where that's going to become. That's where it actually goes and that's where it actually lives. Competent dive leaders with particular experience can re receive recognition for com competence versus engaging 
in formal duplicative studies. If I'm a school teacher and I do the laws of learning and I'm writing lesson plans and I'm actually teaching live every day, do I need to really go through that again? No. But I can, if I can prove that I can do it, I can move forward. And I will say this at this point, not all teachers can teach. They may have a teaching certificate, they may be a teacher, doesn't mean they can teach. Been there and did that one already. All right, that one gets kind of testy and ugly on you real quick. Uh, experienced diving leaders or instructors who are good at their jobs can also accelerate training and certification. And the responsibility again lies with the candidate to request RPL, but again, I still believe this is gonna be more on your part as it is on their part, okay? Again, if you don't want to do it, then don't even bring it up. Candidates compile portfolios of evidence of previous learning experience. So once you decide you're going to use the RPL process, then it's up to them to go out and gather any kind of documentation that they may need to prove to you that they're competent in that area, and then you'll sit down and go uh, over that with them. Training is required whenever there's no equivalency, such as the NAWI orientation, going over the products, the services, the standards, all the, the history of NAWI, all the NAWI orientation that you find in the PowerPoint section of the website we, the, where the free presentations are is all there. So that has to be done. Your exams, there's nothing done there. And then also uh, e-learning is going to take care of the exams, so that has to be done. Training is also required when other skills, so there is no competency for dive rescue. That's just another whole topic by itself, so that has to be done. There is no RPL for, uh, for dive rescue. Portfolios of evidence form a part of the candidate's training record. The course, record, the course records are subject to audit upon written request from the NAWI, the NAWI Training Department, or their designee. So again, if you're going to do RPL, you better have it documented properly. So if something ever goes south on you and the Training Department requests those files to be brought back in, it's there. Because when something goes south on you as a course director and instructor trainer with an instructor candidate, guess who they call first? Mm -hmm. That guy right back there, Randy. Randy gets all those calls, and he's the one that has to start the process of knowing that, yes, they're just ticked off because they failed the course and they want their money back or something went wrong. So, but that's where they typically call. They'll start with him. They'll call the rep, and they start asking for forgiveness or whatever. But that's what happens. So that portfolio of evidence and that record folder really needs to be tightened up. Evidence can take a variety of forms, academic or other qualifications, employer reports, an interview. If you've seen the person teach, why not sit down with the manager of the owner store and say, hey, what do you think about this guy? You know, that, it can happen there. Any publication reports that uh, the candidate has written, relevant letters, photos, emails, audio tapes, videos, certificates, awards, courses, memberships of organizations, of bodies of clubs. So all of that stuff is what would, could be used to prove that they've got it down pat. Dive leadership credentials, whether now or other agents, do not ex excuse applicants from scrutiny regarding their competence. All right? Just because they did it, they still have to do something. Deficiency in any skill that manifests during training must be corrected before graduation. That's pretty much common sense. Deficiencies indicating a lack of previous training should, re uh, should report it to the training organization about their trainer who certified the candidate. Now, let's just be real. That looks good in writing. But if I have another agency instructor that's deficient in something and I call that agency to report them, do you think they really care what I say? No. no. It's good in writing, but, you know, based on my past experience where I've seen people that should have been reported called, it was like, click, whatever, we don't care. All right. More than one evaluation and training session may be required, scheduled over a period of time in order to complete the process and collect sufficient authentic evidence of prior learning. All right, so that's another thing. So if I have a school teacher and I've gone over how to do the evaluation form and give them a topic to present and I give them squeezes or pressure or, or something from the basic scuba diver course and they get up and knock it out of the court, do I really have to do all the other three required minimum lectures? Because there's four entry level uh, presentations done for the instructor training course. So if, if they can do one and they knock it out of the park and get a four or five on it, do I need to do the other three? Yeah. If I've seen them teach one and, they know, and, they're, and they've been diving forever and they've been teaching forever, do I need to see them teach other open water courses, or topics? You don't have, you mean you can, but you don't have to. Okay. What I would do, it's discretionary, what I would do is get off of open water and put them right into master level and give them master physics 
give them the gas law, give them physiology, give them decompression theory, give them, put them in the leadership instructor guide and textbook and give them leadership materials. Give them Bloom's Taxonomy, give them teaching theory, give them the good stuff and see how they do it, stuff that's just not right off the top of their head that they've been doing for years. Then you find out how good they are. And that's what I would recommend you do, spend more time there, they've got the entry level stuff down. Just because they can teach entry level doesn't mean they can teach upper level. They could do it if they study, but why not go ahead and put them on the spot with you there live and do it then. Anyway, so that's that. <clears throat> It may be more time consuming and require more effort than the candidate just to attend the course. If this gets to be too big of a process, just say, you know what, you're just, we're just going to do the course. Right? Because the minimum for an ITC is four entry level, one advanced master special level topic, and one leadership level topic. Right? There's three confined water teaching sessions with briefings and debriefings. There's one confined water briefing and debriefing only. There's one open water briefing and debriefing only, and there's three days of open water training. That's your minimum ITC standards. So that's the minimum. So if they've got the minimums down and you can RPL them through some of the minimums, then why not go spend time on stuff that they really need work on? Why not spend time on stuff that the association is weak on? And we're weak on continuing education. That's where we need to be spending our time on. Nitrox, master, rescue, leadership, spend time there, make sure they're comfortable to stand up and can teach that stuff. Evidence collecting must establish that all criteria have been met and the performance that required by NAWI standard has been repeatedly demonstrated. So yes, they can check the box they've done it, but again, repetition of demonstration level is a good thing. The people that I work with in my territory, the ITs that I've trained, the core trainers I've trained, I've always said, your instructor folder file, your blue folder file should be pretty thick with evaluations by the time that course is over. You know, the question could be raised, if it's brand new, crisp, and four little, six little or eight little pieces of paper in there, and that kind of leads to a question mark. So document, document, document. Once the RPL process has been completed and the candidate is enrolled in the designated course, only the requirements that remain must be performed, evaluated, and passed. Checklist in the candidate record folder, identifying requirements for, for which RPL can be accepted and those requiring performance and evaluated are available to you. The e-learning process records also can be used for RPL using the comments area. All right. RPL should result in an abbreviated and accelerated training program and the same outcome is expected, RPL or no RPL. Would I allow this person to teach my loved one how to dive? Would I allow this dive master to dive or guide with my loved one? Right. That's the same outcome. The graduate meets the same requirements and consistently perform as well as one who completed a formal comprehensive course is the result. Presently, the formal RPL process described here is approved for only NAWI leadership and instructor level courses. So you can't use this for non-leadership courses, only those, only those four courses. You will see all the skills for your leadership, skin diving instructor, AI, and dive master, and then where these checks are, or these X's are, I mean, that is stuff that cannot be RPL'd. Everything else on these lists, you can use RPL if you choose, but where the X marks are, you cannot use RPL. Those have to physically be done. And then on the instructor side, same thing. Here's all the minimum stuff for the becoming an instructor, and then here are the X's, scuba diver rescue, NAWI orientation, teaching NAWI, methods of instruction, Business of Diving Instruction, NAWI ITC in general, all the general requirements, and the pre-qualification and final exams can't you know, have to be done. So that's your minimum. So all this stuff that we covered, all this writing here is what we just covered, is actually in a supplement sheet inside the blue folder file, or it actually is now printed inside the blue folder file. So you just need to know that. <clears throat> On your e-learning, when the student opens up the e-learning course, and when you go to look at the e-learning, there's a place that says Manage Diver Skill Checklist. And if you click that, the checklist of all the skills for that course, whichever course it is, will come up. The student has the ability to go in and make marks and comments about those skills and parts of the course. When you go in as an instructor to look at it, you have the ability, if you don't like the comment, because we're not using this to do something against you, but if you don't like the comment, you can erase it, and once you save it, it locks them from making any additional comments on it. So again, this is the online version 
of keeping your student skills checklist for instructor, leadership, and all non-leadership courses because this checklist is from scuba diver forward. Uh, I had the pleasure of working with Jeff and, and Alan and George back there at Special Forces down in Key West, however many years ago that was, and those guys coming out of there are absolutely phenomenal, and they're good instructors, but they're trained in that military style, you know, where you have to be there. You know, they're paying to be there for true, but it's a different type of customer. And I think when you, if you bring someone from law enforcement and military in, you really need to make them tone down. And forget scuba, they got scuba, just make them teach snorkeling. Make them teach very simple concepts to the fifth grade level, like a child, and, and see how that goes with them, because that's a major adjustment coming from where they're coming from. And then if they can handle that, you know they can handle the upper stuff. But that's just something that really came out in law enforcement, because, I mean, in Louisville. In Louisville, the guys came up in their post course review and said, wow, we never considered the consumer side of this the recreational side of this because all their skills is done for law enforcement. When they teach people how to scuba, it's because of the way they do it in law enforcement or firefighting or military. They never considered, the thought didn't occur to them for some reason because they didn't think they'd go into the consumer side, the consumer version of it. So that's, that's another thing to, uh, to keep in the back of your mind. All right, so now we're gonna do a little participation, a little workshop here. So what you're gonna do is get a partner and you're gonna you're going to play two roles. Each person is going to have to play a role. One's going to be a candidate, and one's going to be an IT or a course director. And when you play candidate, you're going to the course director IT trying to say how good you are. And you're trying to get out of whatever you feel you want to get out of based on RPL. And then as the course director IT, you've got to look at this list and decide based on your current teaching, on what you believe, what you do today as an active course director IT, would you accept that or not? Hey, I'm Hi. Devin. Devin Michelle. Michelle, well, welcome to uh, Maui Leadership. Uh, you're interested in becoming a, an instructor, right? Eh? Yes, I am. All right, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been scuba diving, um, I don't know, for about 10, 15 years now, I guess. And I've been an assistant instructor. I started with the Y program. And um, I think it's time for me to start teaching other people and showing them what kind of fun we have underwater. Okay, great, great. The Y program, that, that's interesting. That's um, pretty good training. Uh, however, it's probably been a while. Um, it has. How, how long? Oh, the Y went out, I think, in the early 90s. Okay, well, we... The 80s, early 90s. We do a real exciting program here. Um, it's called an RPL, uh, where we recognize the actual performance that you've done before. Uh, that way you don't have to repeat things, and we can actually get a little bit in depth with where you need to be developed. Uh, so please, tell me about your diving. It's been all over the world. Um, I've taken a, just a variety of different classes. And, um, my most recent thing, um, since you're talking about the RPL, I wanted to show you this that I did a couple of months ago, um, I became a skin diving instructor. Oh, cool. So cool. there's some proof, I guess, that uh, I've actually done something beyond oh, what wow. I started out to do. Um, well, do you have any log books or anything like that or videos? I do. I have all of the above, and I can definitely all right. well, it bring sounds those. Like, sounds like you're a very strong candidate. Uh, one thing that I like to do is uh, actually just a skills proof weekend. Mm -hmm. or we try just to look over your skills, see where we can help you out, presentations, knowledge reviews, things like that before we actually enter into the course. Would you be interested in something? Like yes, I would. All right, well, let's get started. All right, thank you. Hi, Floyd. Hey, listen, thanks for coming in today. And the reason we're here is before we start your class, we may be able to work with some of your past experiences so that you know we can get through the class faster and you said you had a lot of experience. So. I'm glad that you said that. So let's go through what you have and let's see what we can get you out of. Well, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why I came here to meet with you because, you know, I've been on the dive team for 15 years. I've been teaching classes, you know, at the dive shop for almost the same as many as years. And, and uh, even though I'm a, a dive master at the shop, I teach the classes. So, uh, you know. So you teach both in water and. Uh, oh yeah, I go up all up to the beach. I do all the in water teaching. Uh, you know, instructors never around, so I do all the teaching. So I, I've got a lot of experience in teaching, and uh, that's why I wanted to get my 
now instructor certification so I could uh, kind of leave that shop and, and go on my own. Good deal. So um, what do you have that shows that you've been doing all this teaching and you, know, you have your lesson plans or anything else? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'll show you my badges. I got, you know, I've got the certification from the sheriff department. I'm a, I'm a, uh, let's see, I'm in a, I'm a, you know, I'm all these, Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I've got that and I've got that and I've got this. Let me show you this one here. This is from the sheriff department. Oh, I'm with the Coast Guard too, uh, you know, and, and really, I, I don't think, you know, we, we should waste a lot of time on me, you know. Well, you know, it's not necessarily a waste, okay, because with Maui, we kind of do things a little bit different. We give our instructors a lot of leeway on how they teach. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that that leeway that we're giving you is actually going to be used in the proper fashion. I think it's great that you have your Coast Guard Auxiliary. I think it's great that you've been working with these people, but they don't necessarily teach the same way we do. What I'd love for you to do is I'd like, you, like for you to come back with some of your lesson plans that you've been teaching. Uh, and you know what we'll do? We're going to have you teach somebody here. You know, it sounds uh, well, like a lot of time, though. You know, I mean, I work all day long, and I got to teach these classes. And I mean, is there some way we can streamline this a little bit? Because you know, I, you know, like I said, you know, I do this already. So uh, you know, I understand. Nothing comes easy, okay? And if you let things go and you start training improperly, I'm not saying that you would, but if you start to train improperly, then what's going to happen is that's just going to You'll be teaching people improperly. They'll be teaching people improperly. It'll escalate, and we don't want that to happen. So, spending a little extra time to make you a better instructor, okay, is going to profit you in the long run. Yeah. Do I have to be first aid certified? Because you know I got that too. You know what? That's How about O two? I got that too. Well, if you have it and you show me the show me that you have it, not a problem. We'll we'll work with everything that you have. Great. Not a problem Excellent. with that at all. Just what I want. Good deal. Thanks. Good afternoon, I'm Michelle. How are you? Michelle, Bill. The reason I wanted to take some time to talk to you, because you know we're doing this the, the instructor thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I went through your blue folder. Great, great. Went through all the lists and checked everything. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I brought documentation like you asked me to do. I've got videotape of me doing literally everything. I mean I went through the thing and I checked everything off. Okay. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't think we have to do any of it. Okay. I mean, if you could take the documentation and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I'll take the tests and, and the stuff that we, we have to do. I don't even agree with that, with the rescue stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, everything else I got documented. And I got it in video. I got a letter from the other guys that I taught with. Okay. And I'm just wondering if we can just kind of get through this, get it locked off, and, and I can get going. Great. Well, let's see what we can do. Um, I do want to let you know that um, I personally will want to see some things. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why? Why do you have to see it? I got, in, I got it all documented. Videotape. You who said you bring teach? it in. I exactly said, right. Okay, who did you it. teach? For, who did you teach with before? What was your certifying agency? We were ABC Scuba. Okay. And we did ABC type training agencies. Okay. And I, you talked to me about this. I brought everything you asked me to bring, and now you're telling me I get, you've exactly. got to actually see me do this stuff again. You have the skills and you have the knowledge, obvious by what you brought me. Yep. But I need to make sure that you understand the Nawi part of what I read you do. The book. I did the online thing. I'm good. Then that's all we have to see is that you know the NAWI standards. That's all we have to see. I know the NAWI standards. I passed the test. Great. Then it, you'll have no problem breezing right through anything. Okay, so we don't have to really get in the water to do this thing. We're going to do some in the water. Why? So think of it as a refresher. Wait, explain to me why I have to get in the water after I documented according to what you said I needed to bring in. Mm -hmm. I still have to get in the water. Let me ask you this. Did you do the presentations and all of these skills to match the NAWI criteria? Uh, well, it was probably close, but no, not because it's not all the stuff I'm doing is not NAWI. Okay, then that's what we're going to do. Most you don't have to show me that you have to clear your mask. You don't have to show me that you can teach somebody how to take a regular out and put it back in. You just have to show me that you understand the NAWI system and the criteria that that we require. Okay, great. I, I guess I'll go ahead and do that. Um, you know, I, yeah, I didn't do it to the now criteria, so I guess that stuff I'll have to do. So, um, yeah, that'll be fine. I guess we'll have to do that. Hey, Peter, I'm, I'm totally impressed with the, the information you gave me. Um, your certificates have come out great. Um, your, uh, your past performances, your dive logs. Um, 
very impressive. I mean, Thanks, uh, I think I think things are working out well. Uh, what I'd like to do next is really, you know, let's go to the pool, let's do some dives together. Uh, just kind of show me some of the, you know, some things that, that you've done in the past that worked for you. Um, and we can do some evaluations in the pool and, and just show me what you can do. Uh, you know, you know, that's fine. Um, with the briefings and deep briefings and everything else, you know, you know, I've been a high school teacher for 35 years. You know, do I really need to go through all these presentations? I can show you where I have, you know, been teaching. Uh, I've been teaching uh, basically to that, that form forever. Uh, I've shown my lesson plans you have right there, so we can just skip that, right? No, no, no. Actually, we, we could some of that stuff we can we can go through. But I, you know, I'd really like to see you as a as a person, how you perform in the classroom. You know, th these are the things that that uh, I might learn something from you. Uh, so we get to know each other a little bit better. You get up, teach me something. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to really see what you know how you can perform. You know, but one of the things is is I have uh, I can actually start teaching uh, diving in the high school if I can get this done. But I need to get this done in like two weeks, so yeah, I, I need to get out so of this, as much so this, of this as possible. So this is what we'll do, and it'll be pretty straightforward. We'll do a little in classroom presentation with me, uh, then we'll go into the pool. We'll do okay. some. Uh, we'll get wet. Uh, go into the pool. Show me some of the techniques that you've taught in the past. Um, so now we have some. You know, pretty specific requirements that uh, that we can brush up on, so you can see how uh, you learn from me, I'll learn from you, and uh, be pretty straightforward. All right, we can so go from there. Good, great. Well, Sounds great. Thank, you very, Thank you very much, Floyd. Thank you very much. When I first heard about RPL and most people on the board, I, I was skeptical of it. I was concerned that that there was a chance out there that people could rubber stamp. Well, let me tell you, if someone's going to be an unethical trainer. They're going to cut standards, cut corners, no matter what kind of standard you set on them. We have to police ourselves. And so as I learned about RPL and, and came to see what a valuable tool it could be, I, I came on board with it. And what has been neat to see is the affirmation every single one of these workshops. We ever, have not ever had a discussion about someone who was trying to rubber stamp somebody through. It was always what he said, this, my name is on that card, this, the loved one concept is applying, and as Jed said, it's got to be verified, drilled down into, and the final product should be exactly the same whether you've gone through RPL or the full course. And so to, to wrap this session up, there's three things that you need to remember going forward with RPL. One is document, document, document. Okay, it has to be in writing. Secondarily is, it's a formal process. Okay, it, it is a sit down, in front, in person, meeting with them to make sure all the I's are dotted so you can look them in the eye and have that session and make sure they're trying not to, you know, pull the whammy over your eyes. And more importantly of all that, you've got to be very careful when you do this because if you bring someone in RPL and you do it on the flim flam, guess what they're going to do when they leave the course? They're going to go out to other candidates and say, oh man, go see Chad, he just let you skirt through. I didn't do none of that stuff. And they do do that. I've seen that happen in the past in our current system. And, you, and that comes back to bite you big time. So that's why you got to be very careful in using RPLs. It's there for you to use, but you got to, it is a serious thing. It's not just a blessing in disguise and go away and we move on. So those are the three critical things. You know, RPL is good. You're still going to be doing a lot of training. There's people that are good out there, but there's not a lot that are good. So, I mean, it, it puts your peers at rest. Because as Dave said, when Jed told me about this the first thing, I'm like, whoa, 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 we're not doing that, really? So I was a true skeptic, too. But now that, like what Dave said and what I've actually done, we've already been RPL and all along anyway. We've been trying to RPL. It's just now a formal process.